Hello and welcome back to Sorted Food. Now for today's fried chicken battle, we welcome expert judge James Cochrane. So James, as winner of both Great British Menu and Eater's London Chef of the Year, what tips would you give our normals when it comes to cooking under pressure? I expect to see perfection. <laughs> but shout out, you're using thigh, gutted, you're using a breast. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be brutal. Right. I was going to say, my recipe was heavily inspired by your chicken burger. Yeah. I think it's one of the best chicken burgers I've ever had. So I'm going to try and do it justice here. Don't try and suck up to him now. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see, I guess, will we? <laughs> right, OK, right. Look, we've given you guys plenty of prep time with the food team to come up with a fried chicken recipe that showcases James's chilli jam straight from the restaurant, 12.51. We're going to give you one hour and we want you to create something that is worthy of a twist badge. This is the fried chicken battle. Three, two, one, fried chicken. So, can I ask you what you're actually doing? I'm making deviled scotch bonnet eggs. I don't like eggs. <laughs> but you love chicken, and what yeah. came first, the chicken or the egg? We don't know. So <laughs> I'm gonna put them together. So imagine, a chicken scotch egg. Okay, I'm down with that. Okay, so fried chicken around the outside, we'll make like a sausage with that. Yep. Uh, wrapped in cornflakes, because what do chickens eat? Corn. Corn, there we go. In the inside, you've got the boiled egg, but we're gonna remove the yolk, and we're gonna make a deviled mayonnaise with Hello. the scotch bonnet chili jam. Nice. And we're gonna pipe that back in, served with a little bit of garnish, and uh, a really lovely prune brown sauce. I'm actually quite excited to try this now. And over here, what's going down? So... Oh. Do you want to read from my menu? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah, the, the ingredients look like I might be cooking your chicken yeah. burger. But I am making a beer-battered chicken-stuffed chicken on a watermelon and tomato salad mixed with your chilli jam and that incredible blue cheese mousse Thank that you very serve much. your burger. Nice. I'm using the chicken thigh, but yeah. not as you'd necessarily yeah, hope yeah. it to be used. I'm <laughs> blending up with a load of herbs um, and uh, shallots and garlic. Basically making a pate to go into my chicken breast. And I'm going to be beer battering that and deep frying it. I'm gassed. I'm looking forward to it. This is kind of a, a chicken sausage that yeah. I'm going to be squeezing into the middle of my chicken breast. So therefore, you haven't got to worry about the ooze that you would have in a chicken Kiev. It all should cook at the same time. Well, I'm interested to see like how you're going to taste the seasoning. What, with, with raw chicken? Yeah, are you, are you going to, are you going to like wrap it, double onion cling film, then steam it, and then... plan of action was to just go by eye. Just wing just, it, yeah. Just, 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 yeah. just wing it and basically be generous with the seasoning. We'll see what happens, won't we? So across the whole of this year, our normal home cooks are competing for badges and they're trying to prove that they are improving and therefore we have a leaderboard. This is how it looks as it stands. So I'm going to award the twist badge at the end. You're here to judge the winner of the ultimate fried chicken battle. So James, years and years of, of training in multiple restaurants in and out of London, Michelin Star and beyond. What have you taken from that to create your own sort of vibe of food at, at 1251? Um, the roots behind 1251 is to stem from my background. I'm half Scottish, half Incension. I guess it's learning the techniques that I've learned throughout my kind of whole career and just bringing that into my style of food. We kind of work really well as a team together and touch wood, we're fully booked every day, so I've got no... I know, problem. I know, I tried to book. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to eat at 5pm, yeah. it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, so I'm looking to open up around the clock, probably around October time. And I say this, whoever the winner is, we should put your dish on. Wow, that's a bombshell we did yeah, not exactly. expect. That's awesome. Yeah, why not? Come on, yeah. So this is the sausage part. It's also the fried chicken part of my scotch eggs. This is gonna wrap around my egg and is then gonna be panned later on in the flour eggs and cornflakes. And you plan to taste it at all? Like, or are you just risking it? Oh no! I said it and I didn't do it. Chef, I'm so sorry. This is how you do it in the shot at a restaurant, yeah? Season the bag. What? <laughs> I forgot to season the blender. I'm sorry. Oh, so what now? You're going to massage Jesus. that in? Yeah. yeah, it's a new technique. You've got to tenderise the meat. <laughs> You've got to mix it in there. That's it. So before I process my uh, sausage, I'm just going to see. Yeah, it. just show you that. <laughs> How could you taste it if you wanted to double check? I could fry a little bit off. Yep. And then taste that and then adjust the seasoning. Exactly. Right, I now need to make a hole to stick my filling into. Um, I'm going to get a paring knife, cut a hole into the breast. 
try and get as far down the breast as possible because I want this to be really deeply filled. Don't get a close-up of this, please. <laughs> I don't want this on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> they look really good, man. Can I give you a tip? Yeah, man. Please. I'll say maybe just cut that little bit off there because... Cook it more evenly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That bit's going to dry at the end. Yeah. Snacking chicken. <laughs> <laughs> right, you make cool. a chicken nugget as well. Yeah. There we go. Okay, yeah. that. Decent. Whilst I make my snacking chicken patty, to test for seasoning, not just for snacking, uh, I can make my brown sauce, which is going to include prunes. What's a prune? A prune is a plum. Fig. No, plum. This is a good bit like it's a, a plum. Game. <laughs> it's like good a game. dried plum. It's yeah. like the raisin equivalent of a grape. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to test them occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> they know it, they I just know. never think they know it. So how are you making this sauce then? Onion, prunes, garlic, brown sugar, some cider vinegar, tomato paste. This interesting, marvellous sauce. Interesting. Yeah. Delicious sauce. All going to go Portion. into this machine. It's going to cook it for us. Nice. Oh, I imagine that water probably needs to go in, doesn't it? <laughs> Tell us about the sauce, because it's not just available at the restaurant now. Like, you no. jarred this stuff. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Teamed up with Sauce Shop. We've just launched this Scotch Bonnet Jam. So we've been developing for the last couple, couple of years or so. Couple of years? With, yeah, with Sauce Shop, yeah. Nice. Um, and it's probably one of the proudest moments that I'm super proud of. Like, again, something super close to my heart. And my signature dish at my menu, I've done it with some Scotch Bonnet Jam. And um, the people who come to the restaurant, and you know what, they're talking more about the jam than they did the chicken. So when I had your chicken burger, yeah. like the two obvious things that jumped out to me were that chilli jam and that incredible blue cheese mousse. And the reason it was in so incredible to me is, I don't like blue cheese. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> the flavour combination was incredible, so I'm sticking to that. But I'm not putting it in a burger, I'm putting it in a salad. Yeah, yeah. So I've got watermelon, tomato, uh, chilli jam, and then I'm going to smoke it, and then I'm going to be basically dolloping a, your blue cheese mousse yeah, okay. in around it. So depending on how you interpret, another flavour combination either inspired by or stolen from your menu. <laughs> <laughs> All inspired, mate. Snacking chicken. Use a tiny bit more salt. Right, time for the worst job in the kitchen. Time to peel hard boiled eggs. You want a tip? Just crack it like on there and then put it back in the water and peel it in water. In the water. And it should just come straight off. So, salad wise, um, I've got to cube my uh, watermelon, uh, chop up some uh, shallots and some tarragon, mix that in with some cherry tomatoes, then in with our olive oil and the chili jam. It's flipping spicy, this. And you've got to be generous because we need the spice in the dish. Mix it up and then smoke it with a smoking gun because every normal has that at home nowadays. So on top of the challenges of running a restaurant and setting up the sauce stuff, you also somehow find time to do some really good things. Like you did school dinners you were working on last year. Yeah. And there's a charity that you, I know you're very heavily involved with. Yeah, so Hobsize Action, been working with them. The last kind of couple of years really kind of got more into it in lockdown when we knew our industry was in an absolute crisis, obviously. We decided to do a lot of nice thing where we got just t-shirts designed and we kind of raised a lot of money through that. So if any kind of support that myself and the team could do at 1251, we'll carry on doing that and we still have more projects planned for the future. Um, Supposed to be getting that smoke in the bowl, Baz. I'm trying to... Barry! What? What are you doing? I'm smoking my watermelon. <laughs> we do have get a it, fire get alarm. Get it, get it, Stop, stop, stop. Well sealed, happy with that. So good you can't even see my salad. <laughs> and I'm gonna leave that for as long as I possibly can. About 30 minutes, I think. It's now the construction of my scotch eggs. So I've got my sausage meat, that's been chilling down. I'm gonna roll it out in between two pieces of cling film. I can then pop my egg into the middle and then fold up the cling film so it goes around the egg, squeeze it round, I have this beautiful ball, which I'll then pan in the flour, egg, cornflakes. You're going to keep it as egg-shaped as possible, or are you rounding it off? Ebbers, it will be what it will be. And will the, be, <laughs> will the meat be evenly around the egg? Sometimes. Just because, <laughs> just because we don't want, like, sashimi. No, 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 no. So I've got some self-raising flour and some rice flour in with some vodka and some beer to make our beer batter. Quite a th thick batter because you want this to kind of go really crispy and light um, and the vodka should do that because it cooks quicker. Which is fine. <laughs> Luckily there's some spare. Just the right amount as well for me. Are you, are you double panning or single? 
Double. Flour, egg, cornflakes, egg, cornflakes. You still confident, Jay? Still got the confidence. So now, I'm going to make my, sorry, your blue cheese mousse. <laughs> <laughs> I have interest. Yeah. How, how, how do you make your blue cheese? Um, so, one kilo of blue cheese, one kilo of buttermilk. Well, that's what I'm going wrong. 10 grams of agar. Take it to 100 degrees on the thermo, set it, blend it, pass it. Well, why is the agar so important about that then? Oh, to make it set. To oh, set it basically. Right, okay. I'll take it to 100 degrees. So, it's actually a mousse. Whereas yeah, it's, 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 just a, it's just a blue like a cream. cheese cream. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's get these eggs into the fryer. 170 degrees, about six minutes until deep golden brown. 15 minutes. Amazingly, there's a, yeah. there's a piping bag in here that's already ready to go. Amazing. That's my piping bag. <laughs> I, I just presume they're already prepped for us to use. James, as we approach the final deadline, where do you see the pressure points? A good balance of flavour, making sure that chilli dander doesn't overpower the whole dish. Um, presentation, I guess, is key as well. Well, James just filled a bucket with his sauce. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Portion size. Yes, is okay. Key. Not Top something priority. you've ever scrimped on, James. No. <laughs> Top priority. What are you thinking, Jake? They're looking quite golden brown already, and they're only about halfway cooked. I mean, don't forget what colour they started. Dark. They started golden brown. Yeah, so you're, exactly. not you're not aiming for golden brown. You're aiming. You are aiming for quite a dark but you're brown, not but not for, a burn. Yeah, you're not aiming for burn. Nine minutes. <laughs> really? Okay. Once you're sure it's not stuck, you can get everything else plated up first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's stuck. Is it really? Then you might rip the batter away from the actual thing so the chicken might be exposed and the fast might come out of it. You have to do the other one. It's not worked. So when you put it in the fryer, yeah. just hold it in hold there. Hold it for, first, it Just hold it in there for like 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and then just push it away from you so you know the fat's not going to come back onto you. They are absorbing all of your tips because Jamie's seen the size of his bucket, taken <laughs> your advice and found a smaller one. What Ben meant to say was I heard the <laughs> and I've adjusted my, my basket size and so I'll, 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 I'll get a little dipping rather than a you know, a bucket of... The quantity over quality. <laughs> <laughs> Scotch eggs, done. Brown sauce, done. Now I need to make the deviled mayo, for which I need to cut into my Scotch eggs and spoon out the yolk. So basically you're making mayonnaise with Scotch bonnet jam in it? Yes. And you're not concerned with that sauce overpowering the Scotch bonnet jam? No, because that's, a, that's like a dipping sauce. I don't know which way round my egg is. In the middle. I'm guessing it's in the and middle. And they're egg shaped. Are you hoping yeah. to cut down so it's the, it's the right way round of an egg you're hoping for? Well, yeah, but which way, so which way round is that, Barry? Oh, I get you. No, I see the point. The 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 chicken's not cooked all the way through. We have a really fancy like microwave type thing in this new kitchen, so I'm just going to pop it in there for a couple of minutes, and that will just. You can microwave your scotch egg. The egg might explode, no? Oh, that would be amazing. There's only one way to find out. Sorry, Barry. I'm just going to use this microwave. Five minutes. It's fine. Barry, you got to finish cooking your chicken and fast all the way through. Use the probe. Jay, we need a mayo. Ah! Jamie, did you ever think you'd be microwaving Scott James or <laughs> James Cochran? <laughs> <laughs> Last couple of minutes. Quite hungry, lads. Looking forward to this. Do you want some herby flowers? Yes, Ebers. That'll be really useful. If you can identify what they are, you can use them. Do I get a badge if I can? <laughs> Oh, these are pretty. Are these from your garden? Allotment, yes. Freshly Ooh. foraged for you. Two minutes. How are you getting over there, chef? I don't God, know. God, let me guess. Let me guess. You've got a massive lump of egg in there. <laughs> <laughs> He's lost the star nozzle. Yeah. He's gone for more, Mr. Whippy. Yeah. Forty-five seconds. Baz is looking dainty. Jamie's filling a basket with cornflakes. Three, two, one. <laughs> Stop cooking. <laughs> you f***ed it. <laughs> Anything you could have done with that, and you did nothing. <laughs> is, that, is that just a basket full of cornflakes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, no pressure, but James has spent a lifetime in Michelin star restaurants and now he's judging your dishes. Yeah, I've served him up a basket of cornflakes ever since. <laughs> well, if it all goes wrong, I'll just eat the cornflakes then, <laughs> would I? <laughs>
<laughs> right, let's start with this one. James, help yourself. Thank you very much. Please enjoy my deviled Scotch bonnet eggs served with the uh, Scotch bonnet chilli jam within the mayo. And the Scotch bonnet chilli jam is in the dipping sauce as well, which is like a brown plum sauce. Right, <laughs> cheers. 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 That Scotch bonnet jam makes it, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would say I mean, that. You would say that. <laughs> yeah. It's really nice. Yeah? Yeah, really, really nice. Yeah? yeah. I like the twist that you've done on a Scotch egg by taking out the middle and then incorporating the Scotch bonnet, and I think you've got a nice heat in there. Mm. It's not over the top. The twist up on the um, the breadcrumbs for cornflakes. Yeah. They've got a good texture to them as well. The chicken's still nice and moist. Just cooked. <laughs> All right, Bash, should we dig in here? Yeah, please. Enjoy beer battered double chicken. And where's the chilli jam incorporated in this? So chilli jam is, is been tossed throughout the salad. Okay. So the salad should have a nice warmth to it. And hopefully, a little touch of smoke in there as well. Cheers. 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 The crunch is phenomenal. It really is good. I'll say it's lacking a bit of seasoning. Mm -hmm. Not to be harsh either, but it's a little bit dry as well. Yeah. Sorry, it's, nice it's a little bit dry, yeah. Nice time. I think, I was aiming for 70, but I should have taken it out the fryer and then it comes to 17. Yeah, because there's residual heat coming through. Yeah. My recommendation, Baz, would be to no, take the chicken no. out of the fryer a couple of minutes early <laughs> and then <laughs> into the microwave. The microwave. <laughs> Just yeah. give it a little boost. As a plate, a lot more inviting with the colours mm -hmm. and the, like, the, the tomatoes, the watermelon, the blue cheese. That's an epic combo with that sweet chilli jam. I like the smokiness. Mm -hmm. And the blue cheese is not too strong for me either. On its yeah. own, it's got a kick, but with yeah. everything, it's lovely. Yeah. We're both super proud of that. They're nice dishes. Which, as always, makes the judging really difficult. I get to dish out one twist badge. For me, the dish that had the cleverest twist was the Scotch egg. With the corn and the chicken, chicken instead of pork. Jay, you get the badge. Smashed it. Get in. I also annoyingly would agree that was really smart. But that's yeah. not what we're here for, the badge. We're actually here for the ultimate fried chicken battle, and James has that honour. For me, both are lovely dishes. I think you can all agree that you smashed it with a Scotch egg, um, and I'll see that dish at Christmas time at around the clock. Yes! For sure. Yeah, oh. good place, mate. I think, Jay, that's epic. I'm going to yeah. have you on a real menu. You are, yeah, you are as well. I'm not loads of you, will. Yeah. 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 I think that would work. Yeah. There you go. I might not put the cornflakes on there. <laughs> what <laughs> <a> <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> so as always, over to you guys. Who do you think was most worthy of the twist badge today? And comment down below, did James make the right final choice? A massive thank you, James, for coming down. Where can people find out more about you? So I'm on Upper Street Angel, 1251. We plan to drop around the clock, around about mid-October. And my Scotch bonnet jam, by now, on the platforms of Saw Shop, myself, and it'll be popping up left, right and centre all over the UK. We'll stick all the links down below. Go check them out and thanks again. Thank, thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Really awesome. Fun. I'm going to be in a restaurant. <laughs> With a microwave <laughs> stock in. I know. Yeah, but, Mental. Yeah, 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 he'll do a proper job of it. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst Baz has been inspired by your menu, I'm kind of inspired by your tattoo. Quite like okay. the 1250. I might yeah. get S-O-R-T. <laughs> E, <laughs> but I, if only I had six digits, I would commit. I would commit. I know where you can put the D. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a few, mate. <laughs> that was, well, you walked into that one, that was really easy. <laughs>